All right, so we just crossed the bridge. Um, this is a, this one I know by taste. Um, this is good if people ask too many questions usually, I just start eating some of this and it keeps people back. Um, garlic, it's a wild, wild garlic. Here we've got, um, this is a cherry. There are a lot of different cherries. So, <clears throat> so how do I know it's a cherry? Well, first off, they're just kind of simple leaves with small serrations. They do have these long stipules, which is telling me that's probably a rose family. And then, but I see, see these lenticels, these little dots on the young branches? That's really characteristic for cherry. So you see that, probably a cherry. However, I know it's a cherry here because right here we've got the, these are the flower buds and that's a racine inflorescence and cherries are either going to be singular or racine. And um, so these are some type of cherry. There's a bunch of different cherries in Michigan. Um, right, uh, um, do we have buds? This is a honeysuckle, but I don't think there's buds. So I, we did them earlier. We'll find some others that have buds. Um, here we've got a rose family. It's got thorns. It's got um, uh, trifoliate leaves, real serrate. This is actually a raspberry. Remember how you would know it's a raspberry is it would have a raspberry. Um, but um, but thorns with um, these oddly oddly pinnate or just trifoliate leaves um, is going to be rubus, the genus, which would either be a raspberry or a blackberry or a black raspberry. You can see the the cherry again. Lots of the cherry inflorescences. Um, that's a good distinctive one. Okay. Um, um, well, you can't really see because there's no... There's actually, this is a grapevine growing on this, but I don't have good characteristics here. So, maybe I pretend I didn't say that. So this is actually a dogwood. I don't think they'll be able to see it, but um, dogwood have veins that, that kind of hug the outside. But what's really cool is if I break this, oh, you can't really see it because they're so small. There's a little, you can see it. You, they, they've got a stringy in between. They're just so young that it's not, they haven't got their stringiness yet. We'll, we'll see a bunch more later um like later weeks later later next week um all right so let's just we're in a garden now so none of this is native but you can see the white one those are obviously birch so that's the thing to know um if you're in a garden you're not gonna it could be any plant from anywhere so you should be careful not to um not to feel bad if you don't know what it is. Um, but here we've got opposite leaves. This is going to make a sign. So again, this is going to be a type of viburnum. Again, viburnum the genus, not, not the common name. This is a different birch. This is actually a yellow birch of some kind. It's probably a horticultural one. But just like the white birch over there, um, it's got the flaky, flaky bark. Uh, this is a good spruce. These really poke you. And they're they're really good square needles that you can totally roll between your fingers. So this would be a good spruce. Um, and this is actually a bad spruce because it's a blue spruce, which is invasive. A lot of people plant it in the yard because it's blue. 
and it's kind of a fun you know pretty to have the blue but because but it's invasive so it is starting to invade lots of forests around let's go to this real pretty tree so again you can see from a distance that's blue spruce just because of the color this is a magnolia magnolia have tons of petals it's got this weird a uh, real distinctive stamen, lots of pistols kind of stuck together on, um, oh, you can see up here better. So the pistol up here uh, with lots of carpels, if you will. It, nothing else really looks like that. It It is native to North America, not really native to Michigan, but has naturalized a little bit um, kind of on the edge of parks because pl people plant it a lot and uh, real pretty. Um, some of them smell, this one doesn't really. Um, but it's a real pretty plant this time of year. It's also the base of the, the dicots, if you will, or the base of the angiosperms. It's, um, oh, your textbooks will say u dicots because the u dicots are a true clade, whereas this isn't in the u dicot. But it is a dicot in the old fashioned sense that it was uh, branched veins and. Uh, you know, all the character tap root, all that stuff. Um, we all right. So let's look at this. Um, this pond is nice. I do this pond for my aquatic plants course because obviously it's got a bunch of aquatic plants. But right now, pretty thing here. This is actually not native at all, but it's in the lily family. And you can tell that because, again, three petals, three sepals. Um, so if you turn it over, it looks like a little lily. So good monocot. Lily family. Here we've got irises. These irises are just coming up. Irises are really easy to know because they come up like a fan. You can see the ones maybe in the water a little better. See, see how they're, they're like a fan. So they, um, um, or a fence that's all coming from one point. Um, you can separate those from, right next to it is a typha coming up or a cattail. The cattail, they all come from one point, whereas the, um, the iris, they fan out. And then, so cattails, you know, most people know cattails is the, the, the distinctive spikes. Um, so there's a bunch of cattails through here. What's really nice if you come back here later in the season is there's two species of cattail, Typha latifolia, Typha angustifolia, narrow leafed and then fat. Um, and, and they're both here. Most places have only one or the other. To be honest, most of them are actually a hybrid between the two, which is actually quite aggressive. Um, here we've got um, pokey, so it's going to be some kind of spruce. It's a horticultural variety. But again, see when I, if I just see see how it's like a fan. So so you've got a bunch of these come out from the same point. So these are all coming from the same point. And it's very flat. So this is a good iris. Irises have really pretty flowers. It is a good native. These ones were planted, but but it is a good native. There is a bunch of Equisetum through here, but they've weed whacked it, so it's not so good because of the weed whacking. Um, uh, here's a couple. Um, so Equisetum. Uh, so this is a fern-like, and what's really fun about this one is you can pull these apart. You can't really put them back together, but if you're trying to keep your kids busy while you're looking at plants, um, you can kind of pull these apart and they could maybe pretend they're like a broken Lego or something um, These are actually the leaves these kind of little things and, and it's really full of sand It's really rough and this is a scouring rush. You'd use this to, to clean your um, burnt dishes if you go camping Equisetum. Or horsetail or scouring rush um, They would have little spores on the tip, but not Not, not right now um, We've got all through here a bunch of 
So square stem, opposite leaves, there's flowers would come from the leaf axis. This is, and if we were in person, you could smell it from here. This is a mint. Um, and this is typical mint. So you could put this in your um, salad or whatever, tea or, uh, this one's actually really quite strong. Overpowering. Um, okay, so that's all those. Here we've got, we saw this in my yard. This is a larynx or tamarack. Um, so again, the needles come out, but you can tell these are new needles. So this is a deciduous um, a pine family. And this is a mutant horticultural variety that's got the weeping. Nothing looks like this in nature because it would just get down. Um, in the water, I was hoping to get some submergence here, but they're not quite, they're not quite there yet. Um, but there are just a couple duckweeds. So these little green things that float on the surface, those are duckweed. There's, a, there's several different species of duckweed. Duckweed's good enough for us. So green floaty stuff on the surface, duckweed. Um, there is, well, not really. Um, uh, there's water lilies starting to come up. We'll see them better at other places. So, um, I did water lily on your list, but they're, they're not very good right now. You can see some coming up in the middle, but we'll, we'll see good ones at other places. So we'll just kind of cross it off for now. And the same for the aquatic, the stratophyllum. Um, so you could add duckweed, but subtract the other two aquatics. Um, see what else is good right here. Okay, so see these. Mm. Let's go over here. Though. Long skinny leaves. This is. These are just coming out. But this is a this is a salix, remember, or a willow. Remember, you can use these for aspirin. Super common shrub. Over here, there's usually tons. They're not quite up yet. Um, these are sensitive ferns. These are the old fronds. I'm not seeing any. I'm not seeing any of the the new ones coming up. These are the, the fertile fronds from last year, and they have a different fertile frond than sterile frond. We'll see them lots of other places. I've got it in my yard at, at the lake, so it'll be on a list. Okay, so here's a couple. Just ah, these are pathetic. You can't tell what they are, but um, ah, there's some fiddleheads. That's about all you can say. All all ferns look about the same when they're first coming up. They're cute little fiddleheads. And uh, maybe there's a couple. Yeah, they've weed whacked everything. So um, that's pretty much all of these. Let's go out of the plant area. Um, these are cedar, so this is the white cedar because it's flat. So this is, or also called arborvita. This was the big one I had in my yard, but you can see you can get different sizes of these. Okay. Let's, uh, Let's do this one first. So, pokey square, pokey square. So this would be a spruce. Lots of spruce. Mama. Um, these aren't open yet. These are all ginkgo, but they're not open yet. Come, come here. You know where we're at on campus in the gardens. 
Yeah, they're cute little ginkgos. There's um, four, three of them right here. They're not open. Right? white flowers here we saw in my yard uh, you can really see the bowl shape here so this is a good rosaceae and then in this case it so we call that the hypanthium and then this is the service berry again um, it's harder to know that this is service berry other than well I've just looked at them a lot uh, you'd really know them with the berries but you should know this is a good rose family. And then they do have a fairly distinct kind of oval leaf. In this time of year, they're kind of uh, rust colored, which is unusual, but there's a lot of other stuff that is also rust colored. So it doesn't, it's not a good diagnostic. Um, lots of lilies, but they're not open yet and won't be. So, um, we've got, this is a willow, so um, lots of, people usually think a willow is like a big tree, which is true, there is a weeping willow. Uh, we didn't point it out, but there's a big weeping willow over, you know, on campus, but, but more willows are little shrubs along the edge, uh, particularly in wet areas. This is going to be um, a raspberry again. Trifoliate leaves, get little thorns, and then you'd really know it because of the raspberries. Um, we've got a rose here. It's got the thorns. It's got stipules. And it's oddly pinnate. And then you would know it with the roses, but we're probably not going to see roses. Um, there are the little rose hips. Couple rose hips from last year. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Usually, right around here, there's a bunch of poison ivy. I'd like to point it out. I don't think the leaves are, I'm pretty sure this is the poison ivy, but yeah, it is. Um, too young to point it's out. too young to point out, but um, you can see it's trifoliate, barely. Um, what you could do is rub it on you and see if you get a rash the next day. Um, but that's probably not advisable. Um, let's see. All right. So let's do some trees. This is a fun one. If you guys had ecology lab, you probably remember this one. Very muscular, right? Um, so this is muscle wood, and it's got the real distinct bark. I know this one by the bark. You can also look at the leaves. There's a lot of stuff that the leaves look the same. So the leaves are tiny. So it's hard right now, and they're so small. But they'll be doubly serrate, strongly pinnate. Um, but there's a lot of stuff that's doubly serrate that's pinnate. So it's the it's the bark that is the way I know it for sure. Um, I didn't realize it's right here. There's, um, there's no leaves, but look at the thorns on this. This is a hawthorn. Uh, we will see hawthorns later and we should see leaves with them, but those are some serious thorns. You could pull those off and really do serious damage to your siblings. Um, um, and, and the hawthorns have really pretty flowers. Um, yellow flower, trillium, or not trillium, um, the trout lily. So we've seen them before. So these um, bronze buds. Real distinctive, and then the the flat, um, the bark is totally smooth, just like this one. So this is the muscle wood, blue beech, and then those bronze colored buds are on the the true beech, if you will. This is the American beech or just beech. Um, 
but you can see based on the bark why the muscle wood is also um, the other common name for it is blue beech but go with muscle wood this is a gallium it's not on today's list but it's on uh, a later list gallium are easy because they've got world leaves there aren't many things with world leaves and then they've got cute little white flowers but they don't all have cute little white flowers i think of most things with uh, most kind of ground covers with world leaves i automatically think gallium there are a couple other things that aren't gallium but you know it's most of them are going to be gallium um we've got these weird stipule like things um serrate leaves little um dots lenticels so this is going to be a, a cherry again there's lots of cherries lots of cherries um uh we'll find some big black cherries in a minute um, i never noticed these before but there's another hawthorn i never realized that there were all these hawthorns in here um but the okay. There's just your typical sugar maple. It's hard when they're just first coming out. But they're opposite leaves. You can see from the, the branching pattern. Okay. Um, the beech are just starting to open. Okay, good. You can see the one of the characteristics for beech. Maybe if I put it in the sun, you can see it better. See how it looks like... Um, it looks like my my 14 year old son's chin uh it's real peach fuzz right uh don't tell him that but um see that peach fuzz that's a good characteristic for beach it's uh strongly pinnate like really strongly pinnate and then got the peach fuzz at the end the peach fuzz is really extreme right now but it you can always find it if you look hard enough on at least five leaves um okay and that, that's one of your dominant trees. You know, this is a beech maple for us. Beech is the one that everyone carves on. Um, red pine, I'm not, I'm not showing you any needles, but you can see it's really more of an orange. Um, but this would have two pine needles coming from one point. It's, it's one of your more commonly planted pines you know when you think of um pines all in a row that's usually red pine commonly planted for for lumber okay so now this one we saw a couple minutes ago this has got kind of the round leaves it's it's sad that these are all small leaves right now but see how round they are and then this would have some cool flowers that we actually saw earlier that opened in the winter so this is a witch hazel um a bunch of witch hazel up here. so look at the the it, it's hard to tell with these smaller ones but they're they're st starting to look a little muscular so this is muscle wood you'll see in this forest most forests are the same species over and over um lots of trout lily lots of muscle wood Lots of, um, you can't tell, but these are going to be maples. Lots of beech. Um, oh. I'm not seeing a good um, uh, black cherry bark. There's lots of black cherry little ones. We'll find some. So these are all cherries. Again, you can kind of see all the little lenticels. Um, it's not necessarily black cherry, though. I would need to see the inflorescence. Right there's the better. Um, I'd need to see lots of um, flower. I'd need to see the flowers to, to say for sure what cherry it is. Oh, this one. Um, you know, this is an easy one if you were here, because if you take it and smell it, um, 
it's um smells like um citrus this is a spice bush and the berries are actually edible oh um so we don't have any leaves but um so a close relative of the muscle wood is the um, ironwood and so the ironwood it's got these real flaky bark and it looks like a cat scratching post if you will if you let a cat, cat go crazy on some cardboard it's kind of what it would look like and um, it's real hard wood and the leaves look pretty much identical to the mussel wood they're closely related they're in the same family they're actually in the birch family and that's ironwood this is ironwood um, um, you can't tell, but it's actually, I think that's a service board. Um, um, again, this would be easier with uh, bigger leaves, but they're, they're fairly round. So this is a witch hazel. There's not much with round leaves. We're pretty much seeing the same thing over and over and over. And I really want to see. Okay, here we go. There we go. Thank you. Uh, you see a black here? I see any like right trees? There. That's not. Uh, that's, that's, a, right here. that's a yeah. pine. Um, well, we'll see them other places. There's lots of little ones. Um, this is all the same thing over and over. Uh, good cherry. Um, see the little lenticels. Serrate. It's got these weird stipule type things. Um, all right. So let's just uh, let's just do a couple more real quick before we go through our list. Usually there's some maples. This is a Solomon seal. We will see multiple of these, lots of places, but um, mm, they alternate leaves. The way that you'd really know them is the flower, but they've kind of got these real distinct, they're kind of long skinny stalk with these alternating leaves. And then this is gonna be a false Solomon seal. It'll have flowers at the end. Um, a true Solomon seal will have flowers from each leaf axis. We'll see both of those at Hager Park. But a lot of people like salmon seals. There's a carrot here. We haven't, um, we haven't really talked grasses much, um, but this isn't a grass, it's a sedge. If I, if I just grab one of these, what makes a sedge distinctive is, see how it comes out in threes? I don't know if you can see that well. Um, grasses would all be in one plane. This is coming out in threes. So if you look at it from the side, it's, um, there's three leaves coming from one point. So, so that's a sedge does that. And then these have pretty distinctive inflorescence that are, uh, I'll go through it um, in more detail with you, but this is called a spikelet and each one of these is a flower and it's protected by a scale. Um, I'll find some bigger showier ones, but it's a nice little carex. We've got little pokey needles. So it's gonna be some kind of spruce. These are maple seedlings, and they're all um, sugar maple. And you can tell they're sugar maple because it's more like you're, you know, like this. It's rounded in that between the lobes. 
the other maples are mostly uh, V-shaped. black cherry um, it's got the looks like burnt um, burnt potato chips if you will the bark we'll find some better ones there's actually a shag bark hickory um, and you can tell by the bark the, I'm only gonna make you know hickory, and there's um, but this one is the shag bark hickory. You can tell by the hickory or by the by the bark. The leaves would be oddly pinnate, and they'd be alternate. We don't have any leaves; they're up too high. It's, it's a honey okay. um, This is a cinnamon fern. They're, they're real distinctive because they the brown hairs on them. Um, we'll see some others, but it's it's a cinnamon fern coming up. There's a bunch of them playing up here, and they get really tall, and they'll get. Um, Chest height. Can they get? All right. So this is a better black cherry. In my mind. See how it, it looks like the burnt um, potato chips, if you will. And that's a good black cherry. There's. Um, if you look at the bark of these other trees. Those are going to be a populace of some kind, um, a poplar, and they've got smooth bark, but they're kind of a yellowish, whitish, yellowish. It's in. It's um, um. We'll see some leaves later. There's service berry mixed in there. That's those white flowers. All right, let's just go through our list real quick. Um. Again, we didn't do the sensitive fern. We didn't do the Christmas fern. We did do the horsetail. Um. We didn't see wild ginger, but we saw a bunch of it in the yard, so it's still fair game for this week. I didn't point out dandelions there everywhere. I didn't point out maple, but we saw some of it um, in my yard. I didn't point out Dutchman's breeches, so I won't ask you that for this Friday. I didn't point out wild geranium, so I won't ask this. We did do mint. I didn't point out smartweed. We did do spring beauty, so that's fair game. I didn't point out strawberry. Usually there's some at the entrance. We'll see some other places, so we can do that later. Raspberry, blackberries, fair game. Violets are fair game. I didn't point out the water plantain. There's some in the pond. It's, it wasn't up yet. We did irises a lot. We did a ton of trout lilies. We did, we saw a trillium in my yard, so it's fair game. Cattail, we just saw the old ones, but that's as good as it's gonna get this time of year. So it's fair game. I showed you a carex, but I'm not gonna ask you. I didn't point out a nutgrass or the soft stem bulrush. Neither of those were up yet. And I didn't point out the wild millet. So we didn't do the coontail. We did not do the fragrant. We didn't do the water lily. We didn't even do poison ivy or Virginia creeper. I won't ask grapevine either. Um, I've showed you a couple, but we'll see a ton of it next week. We did see a bunch of witch hazel. I, I pointed out the dogwood, but it wasn't big enough to really show you the good characteristics. So we'll hold off on that. We saw a bunch of sugar maple. We did not see pawpaw. Um, that's on the other trail on campus. We saw a bunch of white birch. We saw a ton of muscle wood. We saw a bunch of ironwood. I didn't point out the flowering dogwood. We saw some red bud, but it wasn't very good. So that'll be next week. We saw a bunch of beech. I didn't point out oak. Uh, hmm, should have pointed out oak. Uh, we'll see a bunch of it other places. Hickory, I just showed you one. 
the shag bark hickory um but we'll see more of it later likewise walnut we'll see later sassafras usually there's some at the entrance uh, i didn't point it out i showed you the tulip tree yesterday I showed you a good magnolia i didn't show you ash we saw a ton of black cherry so that's fair game i didn't do cottonwood or the big tooth aspen that the, the tree right next to us is the big tooth aspen but i need to show you the leaves um weeping willow you should just know willow in general we, we saw some basswood red cedar's fair game white cedar's fair game fir is fair game spruce is fair game red pine i didn't show white pine so i'll just do pine in general and i showed you a bunch of douglas fir and i showed you hemlock okay so oh there's maple so, so we might as well do it since it's uh that's why you should come over here. um so as our parting shot, we'll finish up with, May apples are so cute. Um, they're, remember they're peltate. Um, so, you know, it's like an umbrella. Usually there's some flowers. I don't see any right now, um, but they're cute white flowers that kind of hang down. And um, the berries um, or the fruit are technically edible, but they're poisonous before they're ripe and stuff eats them before they get edible so um, so I wouldn't bother um, but they technically are edible um, so and they, they're a real common understory good forest has a, a bunch of may apples um, so let's uh, end it at that <laughs>